Hi, welcome to part three of building real-world mobile apps using the Telerik platform. Today we're going to look at the iOS debugging options you have when you're using App Builder to build hybrid mobile apps. We'll start off by showing you how you can use Chrome's developer tools to debug your app in the browser-based simulator, and then we'll look at remote debugging iOS using Safari on a Mac, and then finally, we'll look at how you can remote debug iOS devices if you're on Windows. So first, let's jump over to Chrome, and let's run our project in the browser-based simulator. Now this is the example mobile to-do list app that we built over parts one and two of the series. Definitely encourage you to go back and view those if you haven't seen them yet. But if we open up the developer tools, we can see that we have all the normal tools that we're used to in Chrome. Now odds are you've used Chrome DevTools for debugging before, so a lot of what we're gonna cover today will be familiar to you. We can of course use the elements pane to inspect the DOM. So if we right click on a specific element in the simulator that we want to look at and choose to inspect it, it will take us to that element in the DevTools panel. Now you can see the markup as well as the styles applied to that element here on the right. So let's take a look at the element containing our font awesome icon for checking an item off our to-do list. Now you can also make changes on the fly to the markup and styles to see how the UI is affected. This can be really helpful to get quick feedback on changes that you might want to make to your app. Now next we have the network pane which shows the network requests made by the app. We can see all the files that loaded as the app stood up as well as service calls to Telerik backend services. If I click on this, you can see the information about the request and the response, and we can preview the response nicely here, since it's formatting the JSON for us. Next, the Sources pane lets us see the markup, CSS, JavaScript source, and so on for the app, and if we want to open a specific file, say for example I want to open todos.js, we can use Command O, start to type the name of the file, and then select it in the list below. Let's set a breakpoint here just before we filter the todos list. Now, with the debugger paused, we can actually see the unfiltered to-dos here on the left in the simulator. And we can also inspect the state of the app, for example, if I hover over the model here. And then we can continue stepping into or over the code. Now here we can see that the navbar title hasn't appeared yet in the simulator because we haven't set it. And now it's set. So on the right, you can add watch expressions, traverse the call stack, and a whole lot more. And we can also use the console pane to interact with our app. Now since we're in the browser simulator, our app is actually hosted inside an iframe, so we need to change from the top frame to project host so that we're interacting with the app itself. Now just to show that we're able to do this kind of interaction, I'll change the navbar title here. And we could also look at our app object and inspect state. We could drill into it and look, for example, at our categories data source. And we can even interact with our Kindle UI mobile instance and do things like navigate programmatically and so on. Now this kind of interactivity can be helpful if you're chasing down a bug or just wanting to see how the app would respond as you test out new ideas. The Timeline tab lets you record and analyze activity that's taking place in your app. So we can start recording, and then we could do something inside the app, like add a to-do. And now we can stop recording, and then we can look over the data that was captured regarding events, frames, or memory usage while we were recording. Now another very helpful feature is the ability to profile the CPU and memory usage of your app on the Profiles tab. Now, similar to the timeline tab, we can start recording. Let's capture a quick CPU profile. And we can go perform some actions in our app. And once we're ready, we can drill into which tasks seem to take the most time and potentially come away with an idea on how we can improve our code's performance. Now, the resources pane shows you not only the files that loaded as part of the app, like our fonts and images and scripts and styles and so on, but also local storage, cookies, and other information like WebSQL and IndexedDB if your app's using those things. Now our app is making use of local storage to store the default category, so we can see that data here. We have the option to edit or delete as well. Okay, so you get the idea of using Chrome's DevTools to debug your app in the browser simulator. And odds are, early on in the project, most of your debugging time will be in a browser simulator simply because of mature tooling and a fast feedback cycle. However, it's no substitute for being able to debug on an actual device. So since we're targeting iOS devices today, the first thing we need to do is actually build our app for iOS. So in our App Builder project, we'll choose the option to build an app installer for iOS. And notice that Live Sync is turned on there at the bottom left. I'll explain why that's important in a moment. And then we'll click Next. Here you can see I've got a development provisioning profile from Apple that I'll use to sign the app. Now our documentation has a lot of information on how to set up provisioning profiles, so definitely check out the docs for more information on this. And we'll click Next. Okay, so now that the app is built, let's download the IPA file and then we'll install it from iTunes. Okay, so it's installing onto my iPad. And so I'll pull my iPad up now and we'll launch the To-Do app. Great, so we can see it's running. 
Now let's switch back to my Mac and let's open up Safari. So at the top, if I open the Develop menu, we can see my iPad listed here. And this is because I have it plugged up to my Mac via USB. When I select it, we'll see a list of apps running that can be remotely debugged. In this case, the only app I have running that fits this criteria is our mobile to-do app. So let's select index.html here. Now this opens the Safari DevTools, which gives us very similar debugging behavior to what we saw in Chrome a moment ago, except now we're pointed at the app running on an actual iOS device. You can see as I hover over the markup in the DevTools window, it highlights the corresponding elements on the iPad. Just like earlier, we can drill into the markup and make changes that will be reflected immediately on the device. And as you'd expect, we can use the console pane to interact with our app via JavaScript, just like we did in Chrome. So we can execute code. We can inspect the state of our app at runtime. We can trigger changes in the app and so on. We have a timelines pane that gives us nice visibility into network requests, events, and more. So here's the network request timeline. Now I can filter that to only XHR requests. Then I can select one of our requests to the Telerik backend services. And then I can click the resource icon at the top right to view information about the request and the response from the server. Now I can also click here to view the response. So we can also view layout and rendering timeline information. We can filter the timeline. For example, we want to see when styles are recalculated, or we want to see paint activity, and so on. And we can also view a timeline of JavaScript and events, showing things like event dispatch data as well as the time it takes to evaluate source and more. So if I click this icon next to one of the JS files, we can actually view the source in the debugger. And this allows us to do things like set breakpoints. So if I go to my device and I remove a to-do, we can now see that the debugger is paused on the breakpoint we set. And here at the top right, we can inspect our runtime state. We can also hover over instances in our code. And we can use the controls up here to step in and over code or continue on executing and so on. Now one other thing, the resources pane gives us access to things that were loaded like our fonts, scripts, style sheets, but also our XHR data, which is very nice. So here we can see one of the responses we got from Telerik backend services. Now this is just a different way to get at this data besides using the network request timeline like we saw earlier. We can also see what's in local storage on the device. So here's our default category data that we save each time the user changes categories in the app. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that when we built the app, we had Live Sync enabled. Now this is helpful because it means that if we make a change to our app, like here, I'll just add some extra text around our navbar title, we can easily get the changes to the device without having to go through the iTunes install process again. So now that I've saved my changes, all I have to do is hold three fingers on my device screen and it will pull down the changes. I didn't even have to build again. All right, last thing we'll look at. If you don't have a Mac, but you still need to remote debug your app on an iOS device, you can actually use the App Builder Windows client or the App Builder extension for Visual Studio. Both actually use the same remote debugging tools underneath. So here I've got the App Builder Windows client running on my Windows Virtual Machine. My iPhone is plugged up to my laptop via USB. And you can see it's listed here in the Devices panel at the bottom. Now on the right, I'm using Reflector to mirror my iPhone screen via AirPlay. And if I launch the app on my iPhone, we'll see the app name appear under the Web Inspector option in the App Builder. I can expand that and then click the bug icon next to the page currently being displayed in the app, and it will connect a debugger that's based on the WebKit developer tools. Now this will look very similar conceptually to what you see in Chrome, and while there are some differences, they work pretty much the same way. So we can do things like inspect the DOM, view our resources, look at network requests, look at app source, CPU and memory profiling, using the JavaScript console, and more. So there you have it. Three different ways to debug your hybrid mobile apps targeting iOS using App Builder. We have our in-browser simulator, which works in Chrome, remote debugging a connected device on a Mac using Safari, and remote debugging a connected device on Windows using the App Builder Windows client or the Telerik App Builder extension for Visual Studio. Thanks for watching.